it doesn't mean it's going to work well for you. So you want to be able to think critically about that. Right, the fifth one. The fifth one is probably the most common. It's called the transfer device. All right. Now, perhaps, perhaps you've seen advertisements, I'm sure you have, that use this transfer device, in which they want to, basically they'll put the product and they'll put some other picture. Maybe a happy family or maybe some exciting looking event, all right? Or maybe somebody's soaring through the air on a hang glider or something like that, right? And what they want you to do is they want you to associate the feelings of this picture with the product, all right? So that when you see this product, you think these feelings. Okay, that's the transfer device. They want to transfer the feelings from this picture to their product. Right. Perhaps you've seen the Marlboro Man. Do you know the Marlboro Man? Mm. Do any of you smoke? Mm, no, I, but I I remember the Marlboro. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad that none of you smoke. But 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 the the Marlboro Man is an American cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> he's on a horse and he's really handsome and he's really rough and strong and independent. You know, he's got this red box of Marlboro cigarettes, right? And the image that they want you to associate with the product is, if I smoke Marlboro, I will be independent. Like this cowboy. If I smoke Marlboro, I'll be strong and handsome and attractive. I'll be able to do my thing. All right? The Marlboro man has probably killed more people yeah. <laughs> then, uh, um, well, most people in history, and he doesn't even know it. Right? Also, maybe you've seen some car advertisements where they have cars driving through really, really beautiful places. You know, I see car advertisements on TV where they're driving along a beach. Yes. And then you, you see the beautiful beach and, and the scenery, and you feel, ah, oh, boy, I wish I were there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or you see trucks. You see truck commercials where they're driving through yeah. rugged, rugged mountains, right? And the idea is that when you think of this car, you'll think of these beautiful places, or you think of this truck and you think of all the all the beautiful, hard, rugged, strong places I can go with this truck, right? But in fact, when people buy cars and trucks, where do they usually go with them? At the end of the day, they are going to be in Main Street in a young Right, exactly, exactly. They go to and from work, to and from school. Really, how often do you usually you know, drive to all these beautiful uh, places, these cars? Twice a year. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Right. But they, want the, they try to transfer those feelings of those beautiful places and those happy feelings to the product. That's the transfer device. Now, the sixth one, I'll say sixth like that, the sixth one is plain folks. Now, I think you know the word plain, right? Yeah. yeah. How about the word folks? Uh, people. Well, yeah. people. 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 Okay, right. So plain folks is ordinary people. People like you and me. All right? And what advertisers like to do is put ordinary people in their ads. Because when we see their ads, we identify with them. We think, they're like me. Right? And we think, well, if this product works for them, it works for me. It'll work for me, right? When we see people like ourselves, we identify, and that makes us feel closer to the product. Is that okay? Yeah. So anytime you see an ordinary person in the ad, you think, plain folks. Okay, they want me to identify with this person. It's a kind of targeting? Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean, they're basically trying to make it more attractive to you 
make you identify with it subliminally, where you're not aware of it. You just feel more positive because you feel that these people are like you. All right. Um, you'll see, for example, in, in advertising, you know, the United States is not a homogeneous society. We have whites and blacks and Hispanics and Asians, right? You'll see a lot of ads will try to have somebody of every sort in the advertisement so that everybody can identify with it. Now, the seventh one is the opposite of the sixth one. Yes. Right? In the sixth one, we're talking about ordinary people. But in this one, we're talking about very, very special people, not ordinary people. Celebrities. Right? Yeah. Now, I'm sure you've seen celebrities in advertisements, right? Yeah. 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 Right. They love to get movie stars and athletes and famous people to endorse their product. Um, you know, I, I still think that the typical one in my mind is Michael Jordan. <laughs> Probably everybody's heard of Michael Jordan, yeah, even though yeah, he hasn't played. He hasn't played basketball for more than a decade. But you know, everybody, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. You, you know this, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the idea is that if Michael Jordan endorses Nike basketball shoes, well, if I buy them, I can play like Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right? Or if I drink canned coffee, then I can play golf like Tiger Woods. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's very tricky. I mean, people, it, without being conscious of it, people are drawn to the product because of the celebrity. Right? It's not altogether logical, right? All right, <laughs> this one's also quite common and, and I don't have to explain it too much. Uh, sex appeal, right? Now, but notice, notice how I used alliteration here. Glamorous girls, right? They're all really attractive, beautiful, right? Or masculine men, uh, you know, you got the six pack going here, <laughs> right? <laughs> masculine. Or you get these you know, provocative poses, you know, that, that look like, oh, come and take me away, <laughs> sort of thing, right? Provocative poses to try to stimulate you, right? Um, <coughs> this is sex appeal, and basically they want to catch your eye through attractive models. Now the last one, this is it, the last one. It's called card stacking. I wonder if any of you have ever played cards. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You play cards, yeah. right? Blackjack. Yeah. Right, blackjack, things like that, right? Yeah. Now, what's the first thing that you do before you play cards? Shuffle. Count them. You, well, okay, you count the cards first to make sure they're all there. Then what do you do? Shuffle. 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 Everybody knows this shuffle. word, shuffle? Yeah. I'll write it for you. <coughs> okay, yeah, you, you shuffle the deck of cards. The, the, the whole set is called the deck. All right? Now, if you are a very, very experienced shuffler, you can become tricky with the way you shuffle. And you can actually stack the deck in, a, in an order so that you get the good cards and your opponent gets oh, the bad cards. That's what. Yeah. And now my daughter, my daughter, you know, she's she's 11 years old. When she was when she was younger, when we played cards, you know, oh, okay, I'll shuffle and you see her, you know, <laughs> well, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. <laughs> she's like, you know, because she wants the jokers and she wants the aces, right? Yeah. You see children do that. That's card stacking. Okay. But how does card stacking relate to advertising? It, this is a metaphor. It's a metaphor. What it is, is using statistics or using research in a sort of tricky way. Yeah. All right? 
Um, for example, if I gave a questionnaire to you in this class, and I said, how many of you like the ELI? And you all said, no, I like it. And I a hundred percent of students studying English love the ELI. <laughs> right? What's the problem with that? You're not saying that we are scaled because scaled to ELI. Exactly. Well, how many people did I survey? Seven. I surveyed seven. seven. And who were the people that I surveyed? They were ELI students yeah. already. All right? When you give the results of research without telling the details of the research, those results can be misleading. That's called card stacking. Okay, it's telling what you want to tell them and not telling what you don't want to tell them. Okay? And not tell the source? Yeah, okay. And sometimes the source isn't cited. Let me give you an example of this. Cheerios. Have you ever seen Cheerios? Cheerios. Uh, yes. Cheerios. It's a very famous American breakfast cereal. Americans yeah, like to eat yeah, cereal yeah, for yeah. breakfast. Cheerios is in a bright yellow box and they're little yeah, yeah. round circles made of oats. They're very good. They're, they're healthy. Yeah, I, I'm eating Cheerios now. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're good. I, I like them. Lower cholesterol. Yeah, lower cholesterol, <laughs> right? And, and every box says lower cholesterol, yeah. lower cholesterol. <laughs> now, how can they say that? Well, the maker of Cheerios paid money, paid a lot of money, to researchers to conduct the research. Okay? Now, imagine that you are a researcher and General Mills, the maker of Cheerios, is giving you the money to do the research. Now, let's say you do the research and you find, oh, nothing. What do you do? Try it again. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try it again. Yeah. Okay, right. You do it in another way, and you try it. Oh, nothing. Right, I'm going to try it again, and then yeah. you, you try it until you get what you know they want you to get. Yeah. All right, that's because they're giving you the money. Yeah. Without the money, you lose your job. Interest. Right. Right. Okay. And in fact, what Cheerios will tell you. I mean, it was published research. It was published. What they don't tell you is that they funded the research. So there's going to be bias. Yes, it's going to be bias. Okay, let me, let me tell you something. I spent six years in a laboratory doing research. Right? Scientific researchers are people like you and me. Money talks to us, you know. Um, People see what they want to see. Just because scientists do it doesn't mean it's really true. And that's why science, genuine science, looks for repetition. If my lab does something and publishes something, another lab, the first thing they're going to do is try to repeat it. And if they can't repeat it, then they write another paper and they say, well, we tried this and it didn't work. And then another lab tries it and, and they see. And, but sometimes we get the results before we get the, the, the testing and the retesting. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me give you one, one example of this. For years, when I was growing up, I heard that saturated fats are bad for you. Saturated fats are the kind of fats that you get in meat, and butter and whole milk. These are they're, they're saturated fats, and they've been. We were told that they were unhealthy, and we were told that instead of eating bu eating butter, you should use margarine because margarine has unsaturated fats, and unsaturated fats are supposed to be good for you. So millions of Americans switched from butter to margarine, and this happened for 30 years or more. And then in the 1990s, we began to see data saying, uh-oh, not all unsaturated fats are good for you. 
there are trans fats. Have you ever heard of trans fats? Yes. Trans fats are a special kind of unsaturated fat that food manufacturers use. And they're, they're used to lengthen the, the, the shelf life of the product so that it lasts yes. longer. That's a, that's, that's a good purpose. It right. turns out that these trans fats are even worse for you than saturated fats. And so that people who were eating margarine for years and years, thinking that they were being healthy, were actually doing something less healthy. So be careful with science. We don't know everything. Sometimes there are biases because of who's paying for it. Sometimes we just get partial, partial studies and, and we don't have repetition. Or sometimes there's something that we didn't think of that we think of 30 years later. So be careful when you see scientific statistics and things in advertising. Think critically. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Also, you'll see uh, as a, <coughs> an example of card stacking is the use of superlatives. You, you see, I often see uh, beer commercials that say only the finest hops are used. A hops is a kind of grain. Uh, it flavors the beer, right? What does the finest hops? The best. Now, how do they know it's the best? Did they go all around the world and, and get all the all the hops from all around the world and choose? I don't think so. No, they didn't. This is exaggeration. Yeah, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It's not really the finest. It's not really the best. It's not really the most. Okay, so that's card stack. So, what have I done in this little presentation? Well, I've given you a, a university-length lecture um, about propaganda, which is the persuasion of a large audience. Right? You know that now. Um, and you understand that propaganda tends to have a negative connotation because of the tricks. Right? They try to make us think a little illogically. Um, but we've also seen that they can be positive, right? They inform, they educate, and they create positive social movements. And you've also seen that if you understand these tricks, you can be a critical thinker and you can be a wise and cunning consumer. Okay? okay. Do you have any questions? What does yes. cunning mean? Cunning. Cunning means clever. Oh, okay. Okay? It means you can see through the tricks. Okay. Alright? I want to show my references again because I want you all to notice them and I want you to be able to uh, use references correctly in your presentations. Okay? You'll notice I have references at the top of the screen. You'll notice that it's going to be alphabetical order and it's going to have this hang indent. You see the hanging dent? Yes. yes. Okay. Right. Um, and you'll notice that we have uh, the author. The organization can be the author. Yeah. A dot com can be can be the author. No date. All right. And uh, then your your title is italicized. And then your retrieval information. This is where you retrieve it from the internet. All right. Okay. You notice I had a. O R alphabetical order. All right. Okay. <coughs> so um, whenever you give a presentation in, in our class, you'll have at least three references, at least three. All right. And if you use Wikipedia, I don't mind if you use Wikipedia, but it does not count. Include it. Okay. But if you use Wikipedia, then you have to have at least four. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it doesn't count. But if you use it, show it. Right? Don't pretend that you didn't use it. Show it, but it doesn't count. You have to do three others. Why not? What's that? Why not? Why not what? Why not? It doesn't count. Why doesn't it count? Um, That's critical. Because many university professors don't accept it. Uh, the reason is that Wikipedia can be changed by anybody. If you wanted to, you could go in and you could change oh, uh, what's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, people notice it and they fix it back again, but depending on the day and the time, uh, you could have information that's not right. Uh, okay. It's not a good website, you know? Well, nevertheless... Do you allow that? Well, actually, a great actually it is. It is. Uh, I've seen research that shows that uh, there are no more errors on Wikipedia than in standard encyclopedias. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I think I talked about this earlier, didn't I? No, maybe it was my reading writing class. I'm, I'm looking at you, but of course you weren't in the class even though. Did I talk about the experiment, the, the research that compared Wikipedia with regular? No. Okay. I haven't heard. Well, I, I've definitely seen some research that, that basically looked at um, information from a standard encyclopedia, like Encyclopedia Britannica or something like that, and Wikipedia, and they uh, noticed the, the number of mistakes. And they found that basically they were equal. And the reason for that is uh, you know, your, your standard encyclopedias, they get one expert to write about a, a topic. Well, that expert might not know everything. Yes. Or, or they, they only have one perspective. But if you have Wikipedia, you have thousands and millions of perspectives from around the world, and if everybody's looking at it, it they tend to get it right. Okay. Now, at any given moment, it might be wrong, but it'll be fixed later. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, in, in fact, they were about equal in the research that I saw. So that's why I allow you to use it, and I want you to use it if you're going to use it. But it doesn't count. You have to have extra. Okay. All right. Can I use okay. Wikipedia as a reference? Yeah, yep. What, what, what most people say is use it to start your research. And from there, go deeper, go deeper. R Wikipedia often has references at the end. You can go to those things or you can get going. All right? 